Good morning and welcome to St. Patrick's Basilica where today we come together to celebrate the first Sunday of Advent in Year B. We welcome our regular parishioners and anyone visiting St. Patrick's. Also, thanks to those of you joining us in this live stream. Please take a moment to turn around and greet each other. For those of you with mobile phones, please make sure they're on silent mode. We're now placing a PDF with the hymns and readings for each weekend on our website, freemantlesandpatricks.org.au, where you can download them to your electronic devices or print them out at home. If there's one word which we'll all probably never want to hear again, it's unprecedented. But as this unprecedented year draws to its close, we enter a new liturgical year, preparing ourselves and our church for the unprecedented event of God coming to dwell within us. Today, our celebrant is Father Angelo Wiggy Wickrama. Please join in the entrance hymn, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel.
Friends, we begin our celebration invoking the blessings of the Holy Trinity in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My brothers, sisters, and children in Christ, within the four weeks of the Advent season, the church's liturgy draws attention to different facets of how God's plan has been revealed in Christ. It is now revealed in every Mass we celebrate, and that Christ will be revealed in all his glory at the end of time. Friends, for each Sunday of Advent, we take our focus for the Advent wreath from our Advent traditions. Like the people of the Old Testament, we live in hope for the fullness of the revelation of Christ, the Messiah, when he will come in glory to judge the living and the dead. This year, we will also anticipate and pray for the process and outcomes of the plenary council. May the sprinkling of this holy water remind all of us gathered here of our first sharing in the grace of baptism. During this time of Advent, may we prepare for the Lord's coming with open hearts and minds. May this wreath be a symbol to us of this time of prayerful watching and waiting for the coming of the Lord, and a symbol of faith in the power of the Holy Spirit as we anticipate the fruits of the plenary council. My friends, now I'll be blessing all of you with the holy water, asking the good Lord to bless you, and especially remind you of the baptism that you have received and the Lord's coming into your life in a very powerful manner.
your response to each of these stanzas would be, Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. Lord Jesus, your coming was proclaimed by the prophets of old. The prophet Isaiah proclaimed to the people that we are the work of God's hands. We are the clay, God is the potter. Mold us in your image as we walk through the pilgrimage of the plenary council. Response, come Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, we believe you, ca you come among us now. St. Paul declares that the Spirit will, keep, uh, rather, Spirit will keep us steady until the last day. May our hearts be centered on listening to the Holy Spirit throughout the plenary council journey. Response, come Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, you will come again in glory. You ask us to stay awake. May we be awake and, uh, and ready to hear the movement of the Spirit in the world around us. Response, come Lord Jesus. Let us pray. Grant your faithful, we pray, almighty God, the resolve to run forth to meet your Christ with righteous deeds at his coming, so that gathered at your right hand, they may be worthy to profess and process possess the heavenly kingdom through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Isaiah. You, Lord, yourself are our Father. Our Redeemer is your ancient name. Why, Lord, leave us to stray from your ways and harden our hearts against fearing you? Return for the sake of your servants, the tribes of your inheritance. Oh, that you would tear the heavens open and come down. At your presence, the mountains would melt. No ear was heard, has heard, no eye has seen. Any God but you act like this for those who trust him. You guide those who act with integrity and keep your ways in mind. You are angry when we are sinners. We had long been rebels against you. We were like men unclean, all that integrity of ours like filthy clothing. We have all withered like leaves and our sins blew us away like the wind. No one invoked your name or roused himself to catch hold of you. For you hid your face from us and gave us up to the power of our sins. And yet, Lord, you are our Father. We the clay, you the potter. We are all the work of your hand. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
a reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. May God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ send you grace and peace. I never stop thanking God for all the graces you have received through Jesus Christ. I thank him that you have been enriched in so many ways, especially in your teachers and preachers. The witness to Christ has indeed been strong among you, so that you will not be without any of the gifts of the Spirit while you are waiting for our Lord Jesus Christ to be revealed. And he will keep you steady and without blame until the last day, the day of our Lord Jesus Christ, because God, by calling you, has joined you to his Son, Jesus Christ, and God is faithful. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint Mark. Glory to you, O Jesus said to his disciples, be on your guard, stay awake, because you never know when the time will come. <coughs> it is like a man traveling abroad. He has gone from home and left his servant in charge, each with his own task. And he has told the doorkeeper to stay awake. So stay awake because you do not know when the master of the house is coming, evening, midnight, crop crow, dawn. If he comes unexpectedly, he must not find you asleep. And what I say to you, I say to you all, stay awake. The saving gospel of the Lord. Jesus Christ. My brothers, sisters, and children in Christ, the season of Advent is a beautiful season, and everyone likes this season, especially our young ones, the small ones, for the simple reason they'll be getting their gifts for Christmas from their parents, from their grandparents, and so on. And above all, my brothers and sisters, we are happy because we celebrate the birthday of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And Jesus who brings hope, peace, love, and joy. What a wonderful season. So the Holy Catholic Church, my brothers and sisters and children, gives us uh, maybe about four weeks for us to prepare ourselves inwardly. Of course, we have beautiful decorations. You have already started decorating your homes and outside, probably, no, with the lights and all that. Well, well done, and God will bless you. So we do the external preparation as such. 
Also, the church invites you and me, friends, to always do an internal preparation to really celebrate the birthday of our Lord Jesus Christ. And it is going to be a wonderful thing because Prince of Peace is coming into our lives. Probably you have heard of, of course, you have heard of Mother Teresa of Calcutta. Now she's a saint. And as we know, friends, that Mother Teresa of Calcutta had been a very generous person. And whatever she had, she gave out to the poor people, anyone who came to the convent or to her place, and she was ever ready to uh, donate, donate all what she had. So one day, one of the community members came to Mother Teresa and said, Mother, we will have nothing left for ourselves because you have been giving things to, uh, to everybody. Then Mother Teresa told the sister, it seems, oh yes, I have. Well, I still have my hope. I still have my hopes. My brothers and sisters, this season is a season of hope. Advent is a season of hope, where we await for the second coming of the Messiah, the Savior, the greatest prophet in the world. That's what we said even in our ceremony here. Come, Lord Jesus, Maranatha. Come, Lord Jesus. Jesus is coming into our lives again and again. The readings of today's liturgy, my friends, invited all of us you know, to be prepared and have that hope in the Lord. And in, in today's gospel passage, our Lord, maybe about four or five times, uh, tells his disciples and all of us today, so stay awake, so stay awake, which means that we need to be vigilant. We, because the Lord is coming into our lives, friends, our Lord will not come as a person, Jesus will not come as a person, but Jesus can come in many ways, maybe through the environment, through difficulties, through people, probably uh, through my mother, father, brother, sister, community member, Jesus can come, in into, come into our lives. I'll tell you a small story, probably you have heard this story before. It's about a cobbler a, a, a called Simon, who uh, used to have a, 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 a small kind of a shop where he, repairs and make, where he repairs and makes shoes for people. And uh, he had been a very devout Catholic, a very good uh, 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 kind of a Catholic. And then who used, like yourself, friends, who used to pray in the morning, and used to pray in the afternoon, also at night as well, lighting the, the altar candles and then kneeling down and pray to the Lord, thanking the Lord for giving the day, thanking the Lord for uh, being with him throughout the day as well. So one day, one evening, he finished his work and then lit the altar candle and started praying to the Lord, closing his eyes. And suddenly he heard a voice, Simon, Simon, I'm coming to your place tomorrow. I'm coming to your place tomorrow. And he looked around, nobody was around. Who said that? Again, he closed his eyes and then prayed. Then again, he heard the voice, Simon, Simon, I'm coming to your place tomorrow. Then he got up and then peeped through the window. Whether there was a, you know, there's someone who was trying to tease him. Then again, no one was around. Again, knelt down, knelt down and then prayed to the Lord. Again, he heard the voice, Simon, Simon, I'll be coming to your place tomorrow. Then he asked, who are you? Who are you? Then the voice came again, I am Jesus, I am coming to your place tomorrow. And he was so delighted, so excited, and all that, and then went to bed early, and woke up early in the morning, and uh, organized the place well, and cleaned up the place well, and prepared food for this special guest. And it was, no, he, he's going to, now Jesus is coming into his house. What a wonderful moment for him and in his life. And he was waiting. Then in the morning, there was a mother and a child who came to the shop to get the, the child's uh, shoe repaired. And then he attended, and then while he was repairing the shoe, he saw the little one looking at the fruit basket on the table for the special guest and he saw it, and then what he did was he finished the work, 
and wrapped about four or five fruits and gave it to the little children. Then she, little children was so, a little child was so happy. Sorry. And then, so they went away. Now Simon was waiting for the Lord. And at any time he'll come to see uh, uh, him and so on. And then suddenly he sees uh, Peter, who had that elbow problem, I mean, uh, who, who used to take spirits and then a, a, a terrible fellow. And then when he takes spirits and he does not know what he was doing and he shouts and uh, yell and so on. And then he came to his shop. Now he was a bit, uh, bit upset. If Lord comes at this moment, the Lord might think that I am a, a good associate of Peter who drinks and all that. But anyway, and he said, don't uh, shout, Peter. I have prepared some food for a special guest. You share, you have that food and then and eat and go and sleep. Don't trouble, trouble the society and your family as well. So he treated him, went away and waiting for the Lord. Now evening, now I, he sees another lady coming and then uh, for some work and then he attended to that work as well and the Lord did not come. Now it was time for him to close the shop and he did so and then went in front of the altar, lit the candle and he was so disappointed and knelt down and prayed to the Lord, 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 you said that you would be coming today and I've been waiting for you, eagerly waiting for you, but you never came. I'm so upset, so disappointed, and so on. Then he gets a voice, Simon, Simon, don't get disappointed. I came to your place, not once, many a times, and I'm so delighted that you treated me very well, and you are a lovely person, and uh, I bless you, and... Uh, so Simon was so happy listening to that voice as well. My brothers and sisters, children in Christ, through this story, what I want to tell you is that the Lord can come in different forms, friends, into our lives. Sometimes we reject the Lord, maybe through a, a poor person, maybe uh, through, as I told you, through my mother who is struggling, suffering, maybe my senior daddy and my grandparents and my neighbors probably, and my staff members, Jesus can come into our lives. What we have got to always uh, you know, keep in mind is, is my heart ready to receive the Lord who is coming into my life? Maybe in different forms. When we open our minds and hearts, friends, when we receive the Lord like this cobbler, who a man, Simon, devout Catholic, and we will be really, we'll be able to help the Lord who is coming into our lives. And the Lord who created all of us will be happy, and we will be happy because we, we don't miss those opportunities where the Lord is giving and the Lord is coming into our lives. So, friends, uh, as we begin uh, the season of Advent, the season of hope, where the Lord is coming into our lives and he's going to be born again, so we will receive the Lord. Come, Lord Maranatha, every day in our lives and we are so happy to receive you and 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 we will be very very happy people and peaceful people as well so i conclude my reflection with this saying i quote christ always identified himself with the least the last and the lost i repeat christ always identified himself with the least the last and the lost in the name of the father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now we will all stand and profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Jesus Christ, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. He will come, come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, 
the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Prayers of the faithful. As we gather here today, we are called by the psalmist to turn to God, to see God's face. We see God in the way our prayers are answered, so let us pray. We pray for the leaders of our church that during this time of Advent, they will follow St Paul's example and be grateful for how we have been enriched through the graces we have received through Jesus Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the leaders of the world in this time of stress due to COVID-19 and economic recession, that they may exercise their office for the work of peace and unity among all people. We pray to the Lord. We pray for those who are burdened with suffering, especially those who have COVID-19 and are unable to have their families with them. May the caring hands that support them show the evidence of God's love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the frontline staff who have become ill due to their care of others during the pandemic. Grant them the strength and health. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the people gathered here today that we may be granted the grace to stay awake and to see the love of God in the events in our lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray that in this time of Advent, as we anticipate the incarnation of Christ your Son, that all may come together in unity and joy and look forward to a fruitful plenary council. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray in this time of Christmas preparation that all those who have not heard of Jesus Christ will be drawn towards an understanding of him as the light in the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who have died and for those who mourn at this time of the year, especially those who have been prevented from attending to sick loved ones and funerals of family members due to the pandemic. May they be filled with love and hope. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We are remembering our departed loved ones during this month of November. So we will thank for our parents who are departed and also our brothers and sisters near and dear ones. Also, I would like to remember uh, the priests uh, and religious who served in this parish and also our teachers. Also today, we pray for Dominico and Rosa Minervini. Also, we pray for the intention of, uh, of Tony Scarta. We pray to the Lord. Father, as we turn to see you in the love shown in the world, we ask that you uh, to accept these prayers through the same, through the name of your Son and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. Chosen, open our lives to the light of your. 
us free, come to make us your own. Come to show the way to your people, your chosen. Open our eyes to the light of your promise. Come to our hearts with healing. Come to our minds with power. Come to us and bring us your light. You are hope which brings your courage. You free, come to make us your own, come to show the way to your people, your chosen, open our lives to the light of your promise, come to our hearts with healing, come to our minds with power, come to us and bring us your Mothers and children, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, we pray, O Lord, these offerings we make, gathered from among your gifts to us, and may what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below gain for us the prize of eternal redemption. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with and with all the hosts and the powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed, Holy Lord, the fountain of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Timothy, our Archbishop, Donald, his auxiliary, and all the clergy, religious, and God's loving people and children. Remember your servants, Domenico and Rosa Minervini, and all the uh, other departed members whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that they who were united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, spouse with the blessed apostles, Saint Patrick, Saint Eugene Mazenod, Saint Mary of the Cross, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co as to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Per ipsum et cum ipso eti in ipso, est ibrio patri omnipotenti, in unitate spiritu sancti, omnes ono et gloria, per omnia secula seculorum. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, friends, we dare to sing. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Now let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you, friends. Peace be with you. Peace with you. Thank you. And this is Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall the body and blood of Christ bring us to the last of life.
announcements. A mandatory contact register will come into play from Sunday, or rather Saturday, the 5th of December this year. This means anyone who enters the Basilica of St. Patrick will need to register either via the QR code, which will be available in the front foyer of the Basilica, or via the manual contact register, which will be available in the front foyer of the Basilica as well. May I sincerely request all those who have mobile phones to download the Safe WA app. And uh, if you uh, can do this prior to your arrival in Basilica, it would make everyone, uh, everyone's job easier. Then on your arrival, you just need to scan the QR code we have in the foyer of the Basilica. For those who do not have mobile phones, manual registers will be available in the foyers of the Basilica. Please make sure to enter your details clearly. I sincerely look forward to your cooperation in this regard so that we could keep the community safe and everyone gets to enjoy the fullness of health. Please note this is a mandatory requirement. If you fail to meet this requirement, we will incur a huge fine. So kindly cooperate with us. Thank you. On Thursday, the 3rd of December, the missionary oblates of Mary Immaculate around the world will celebrate the 25th anniversary of the canonization of our founder, Eugene de Mazenod. It is indeed a great moment of grace for all the sons of de Mazenod and all the faithful who are under the care of the oblates to celebrate this day and to give thanks to the Lord. There will be a concelebrated mass on 3rd December at midday in our basilica. Please join us and continue to pray for the oblates, oblate brothers and priests around the world. Please pray constantly to, for more vocations to the priesthood and religious life. Advent is the journey towards an understanding of the mystery of the Christmas miracle. The Catholic Diocese of Wollongong has a small book of daily reflections for us to use throughout Advent and Christmas. Some of our parishioners have participated in the past to prepare themselves to celebrate the joy of Christmas. This resource book is a personal reflection and is not a program as such. It costs $5. We will meet every Monday at 7 p.m. in the Parish Administration Center. If you want to be part of this spiritual preparation for Christmas, please contact the parish office on 933-522-68, Monday to Friday. Thank you very much. Also, I wish to thank all of you friends for coming together this morning to offer this sacrifice to the Lord. God will bless you, and we'll continue to pray for one another as well. Also, I wish to thank our acolytes, Dominic, Paul, and Luke, for their contribution, also our reader, Margaret, thank you, and our ushers, uh, Anna, also our cantor, uh, Bonnie, and our great organist, Dominic, Angie at the desk, and also uh, Danka and, and uh, Zuzi, also our collectors. Thank you very much for your generous contribution, and may the good Lord bless you all. We'll all stand for the final prayer and blessing in our celebration this morning, friends. Let us pray. May these mysteries, O Lord, in which we have participated, profit us, we pray. For even now, as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and hold fast to what endures. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Amen.